How are you this morning? Hey, good morning, Eric. How you doing? Congratulations on this new show, man. Thank you very much. Uh, we are the North Georgia Mountains all the way to the Florida line. I guess we'll be in your neck of the woods here shortly. Um, yeah, you're growing every day, it looks like. It's fantastic. Now, I, I, I got to ask you before I do anything else, <laughs> this Kavanaugh situation, I mean, talk about blowing up in the face of the Democrats, this New York Times stuff. Well, you know, we laugh about it, but honestly, goodness, it, this is the height of the obstructionism coordinated with the media. The New York Times popped this article out there without verifying it or corroborating it at all, and immediately all the Democratic presidential candidates, as well as some people who are getting into my race, have all called for his impeachment. And we're going to impeach a sitting justice in the Supreme Court on an allegation by a paper who was, that was not verified. They immediately jumped to that. That just shows the height of the obstructionism that, that we live with here in D.C. by the Democrats. It, it, it really is striking that they, anything that they think stands in their way, and now the Supreme Court is one of them, they want to declare illegitimate. The, the Senate is illegitimate, the Electoral College is illegitimate, the Supreme Court is illegitimate, Brett Kavanaugh is illegitimate, the President's illegitimate. It, 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 they just they, they can't play by the rules, and so they want to upend it all. Well, Eric, this is about power. It's not about helping the working class or anybody else that, that they claim to champion because they failed them over the last hundred years. I mean, the great war on poverty of the great society was a failure. I mean, poverty rate today is the same as it was then. I mean, all the things that they claim to champion, they have failed. The irony is this. This is what they want. you you got to read what they say. Schumer is saying that if they get, if they get the majority in the Senate, that they will get rid of the filibuster rule, add, try to add D.C. and Puerto Rico as two new states, add four seats to the Supreme Court, and do away with the uh, Electoral College. Well, that's a description of a one-party state. That didn't work out very well for the people in Russia in 1917, or Germany in 1933, or Cuba in 1959, or Venezuela today. It's been an unmitigated disaster every time. And yet these guys running for president in the Democratic Party are absolutely serious about changing the free market, free enterprise system in America. Well, and that leads me to here in Georgia. I was, I, I guess I shouldn't be shocked, but I kind of am that there is uniformity of opinion among those who would like to replace you in the Senate uh, that we also need to investigate and, and pay reparations for the Civil War. Uh, I, I was actually really stunned that he, even the ones who want to portray themselves as reasonable suddenly are taking a position that's not even favored by a majority of the black community in the country. Well, no, look, majority of the black community, Asian community, Hispanic community, uh, as well as the Caucasian community, are reasonable people. <clears throat> they know what's right and wrong, and they just want the same thing we all want, and that is a future for our families. They want freedom. That's why we're here. Our founding mothers and founding fathers were serious about this, and it served us well for 230 years. People don't realize that to get what they want in the Democratic Party, what these guys are, are perpetrating right now, trying to perpetrate, actually does away with individual freedom in America. They want the federal government, who they think know more, knows more about running our lives than we do, to be in charge. And, and we know over the last hundred years, every time we built a big, a big bureaucratic program here in Washington, it has failed, every single one of them. So this is, this is serious, and, and this race is not about any of the issues the Democrats are talking about right now. It is simply a, more, a, a referendum on what we want America to be for our kids and our grandkids, and, and I, I'm going to be fighting for the free market system and free enterprise system that has served us so well for 230 years. Let's take a quick time out and check traffic with Doug. Let's do it. 543 here in the Skycopter on the inner loop. I spot a new trouble in the left lane in DeKalb County. Listen up east side, 285 south at Memorial Drive, exit 41. Stay in the right lane there for nearby. And if the delays go all the way back to 400, the outer loop is just slow and ugly. 285 west and southbound from Beach Street Industrial all the way around to I-20 of the West Expressway, y'all. Now, Senator, let me, uh, on, on a policy note here, it looks like the White House is trying to come to terms with and announce what they would like to do on the gun issue in, in the Senate. There have been discussions of red flag laws and, and gun restraining orders and expanded background checks. And What are you hearing and, and thinking for yourself up there? Well, certainly, you know, we all grieve over the loss of life, and, and nobody less than, uh, nobody more than President Trump. And, um, you know, he has actually already acted. Last year, he, he uh, sponsored uh, the Fix NICS, the NICS bill that makes sure that every um, law enforcement group in America, whether it be local, state, or federal, shares criminal backgrounds. We want to keep the guns out of the criminals' hands, out of the people's hands that, that shouldn't have it. Uh, but let's remember, the Second Amendment is part of our Constitution. I support that as well as the First Amendment. 
but <clears throat> we, we also know that we need to be responsible and keep the guns out of the hands of the people that should not have them. Trump also signed a, a Stop School Violence Act uh, last year called the Hatch Bill. And I've got a, a, a school safety bill that I'm putting in uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, here. And we, you know, the president also got rid of bump stocks. So he's already moving. But what he's going to do, I think, in the next day or two is come out with his platform for what we need to do now to tighten up on background checks. And uh, he knows this is a slippery slope and that uh, we have to be very careful in, in doing this. But there are ways that we can be a bit more efficient about keeping guns out of the hands that, uh, of the people that should not have them. Now, along those lines, it seems like Democrats are, I mean, it looks like they're going to play politics in this. Representative Ken Buck from Colorado points out that they don't want to have any language in any of the legislation dealing with violent gangs and, and access to arms and gangs and red flag laws related there, too. That it seems like this is just another issue, much like immigration, where they're politicizing it instead of actually trying to find some common ground. Of course. Tell me how a party can justify sanctuary cities. Eric, you've talked about this for years. And ever since Kate Steinle was shot down on the streets of San Francisco, I met her father. I mean, you, you can't imagine what that does to a father to see his daughter shot right there before him by a guy who had been arrested and deported eight times, and the, and the city of San Francisco would not turn that individual over to federal prosecutors who wanted to deport him again. And he, he killed an innocent bystander. So if the Democrats are so concerned about security and safety and looking out for the little guy, then why don't they stand up and help us enforce our borders? I mean, th this obstructionism over the president has gotten perverse. Right now, that desire of the Democrats to have an open border is keeping us from actually funding the government right now, literally today. We're going to vote on a defense bill that the Democrats are probably not going to let us vote on because they want to block it because the president's trying to move money around, which is his legal right, to, uh, to help support uh, the defense of our borders. So uh, we know what's, what's working there, by the way, but uh, this is a much bigger issue, and I applaud the president for staying on it. Well, one last thing for you here. Uh, with these Democrats now running, it, it's it's a reminder, one, of how shallow their bench is. Uh, but I just uh, you and I have talked about this before. We talked about it in, in August, and we've talked about it on the Atlanta show, that they really it, it's striking to me how far left Georgia Democrats really seem to want to run to run against you. You've got Theresa Tomlinson and Ted Terry out there trying to out-progressive each other with some sort of scorecard, and now Ossoff coming out with reparations and gun bans and everything else. Uh, he, he, I, he, I, I got to imagine you're going around the, the state of Georgia and, and not set you up for a super softball here, but I don't hear anybody in the state of Georgia wanting any of the stuff that the Democrats are offering. Listen, one thing I'm sure of in Georgia, you know, I grew up there, I've lived there and, and worked there all my life mostly, and I can tell you that the road to socialism is not going to run through the state of Georgia, Eric. It's not. People are smarter than that, and they see through this. The people who are now talking about running for the Senate in Georgia are going to have to, to be just a rubber stamp for uh, the party line in the Democratic Party. This, that's the way they operate. And if they were to get elected, they would be nothing but a rubber stamp for Chuck Schumer in the United States Senate. I see that every day here where they align their votes around these radical I'm not even using the word progressive because progressive sounds like a positive thing, right? This is retro. They're not progressive. This is the retro socialist party that want to take us down a road that has failed around the world consistently over the last hundred years. And it just is remarkable to me that they really believe that Americans are that stupid that we would do something to, to kill the, the, the uh, you know, this system that we have that's been so, so good for us. Well, I, I'm I'm assuming that I've got a lot of optimism and faith in the Georgia people that they won't do that, and, and we'll stick with you. I sure appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me this morning. Well, thank you, Eric. Good luck on your program, and uh, I look to see you soon. Thanks, man. Thanks very much.